Hi there, my name is Peter Monk, and uh, this is a review of the Numac 4-Track DJ controller. Finally got my hands on the Numac 4-Track DJ controller, which essentially is an updated version of the Numac NS6, built specifically for Tractor instead of, of Itch. So, let's have a look at uh, what the kept the guys over at Newmark busy the last couple of months. Here it is, the Newmark 4-Track. It is a DD controller and a standard 4-Track DD mixer combined in one, bundled up with a special 4-Track edition of Tractor Pro. I kept my Tractor 2 running, so I honestly can't tell you too much about the Tractor 4-Track edition, but from what I understood, it's a lighter version of Tractor with a few less features than the Tractor 2 that I'm currently running on my machine. The controller has a real nice build. It has a brushed aluminum casing and a general rustic feel, um, which really makes the controller feel nice and rigid. The faders feel nice and sturdy, and even though I prefer bigger robotized EQ knobs due to my long fingers, I think that Newmark found a decent compromise with these knobs, which for some reason reminds me a bit of the Alan Heath X1 series EQ knobs. Uh, maybe it's actually the space in between the EQ knobs that reminds me of the X1. Uh, it, it just seems slightly less cramped on, on the 4-track here. So that I'm really happy about. The platters have a nice and smooth feel to them. They run with a 3600 ticks of resolution per rotation. So it does not only feel smooth rotating the platter, uh, but it will also sound smooth within the digital world, meaning inside Tractor software. Lucky for me, I, I rarely scratch, so I can keep the platters, the platters setting off scratch, which uh, will avoid incidents of me actually touching the platters when reaching for the loop buttons up here, which I use a lot. I, uh, this is just something I noticed uh, happening a couple of times during the last couple of days. Uh, the pitch faders are nice and long, and uh, they have the feel of the Technics 1210s, in my opinion. If you're not familiar with the 1210s, uh, they are somewhat firmer than the CDJ faders. The mixer section features a four channel mixer, which works as a regular mixer while at the same time it functions as a controller for the Tractor DJ software. The fact that you have a controller and a straight up audio mixer is great for DJs who are looking for a flexible system. So with this box, you can easily inject 12 in vinyl. You can uh, put CDs and you know even an iPod into your laptop mix sets. I, I really do find it inspiring to be able to to take some of my old vinyl stuff that I never had a chance to to record um, and then just kind of uh, inject them right into my otherwise majority laptop uh, based uh, DJ sets. That's that's a really big plus. On the back, we have four regular inputs, four line, uh, two phono and two mics. We have the booth out as RCA, the, the master out as both RCA and balanced XLR. So what we don't see inside the box is a 24-bit audio interface that runs through uh, the one and only USB cable that needs to be connected to the computer. All sound and all media run through this cable. Um, and all the media that is sent via uh, the controller is 14-bit. Some people might call it high-resolution MIDI. Um, a normal bit rate of a MIDI is 7-bit, so uh, the high-resolution or the 14-bit gives an extra smooth feel to, um, to the faders. It gives a little extra precision when using faders and, and platters and knobs and so on. Uh, that's a really big plus as well with this controller. The controller comes with two maps that loads up in Tractor 2. Since um, I was already running Tractor 2, uh, I simply went into the controller setup menu and um, imported the two maps uh, that, that came with the software, uh, the 4-track main map and the 4-track FX map. You just make sure that you receive data from the 4-track and you send data back to the 4-track unit and then you're simply up and running. The FX uh, console on the top of the unit, it uh, slides and locks into place nicely. It connects to the main unit via USB, so you don't have to take an extra USB slot. From uh, this panel, you control the two first effects in Tractor, as well as the high-pass and low-pass filters that you have on each channel. 
the knob match the option in tractor software although i had to change one thing in the map uh, the button under the FX mix was set up to allow scrolling through effects. I prefer to have this button as an on and off switch for the effect itself. Maybe there's something that has been changed in a newer map, I don't know. But uh, it uh, was really not difficult to change at all. It took me three clicks in the control mapping and, and that was all done. The file browsing works really well and uh, lets you browse seamlessly between favorite playlists playlist in the tree and uh, tracks within the playlist. So you load uh, the track by either pressing right or left with these buttons here. And you preview the track by, by clicking down on the, on the rotator. As for pros and cons, I can only speak for myself since we all have our different ideas of what the perfect DJ setup is. But uh, let's start uh, with some of the cons to kind of clear them out of the way because they're not really major cons. They're maybe just more personal things. I use a lot of effects and my earliest setup was two X1s along with two GGM 909 mixers. It is absolute total effect lore. I have uh, four effect channels that I can edit on the fly with the X1s. And additionally, I had the GGM 909's uh, dedicated filters and effects. They have uh, on each channel a dedicated effects unit. So the layout of the four track effect knobs only lets me edit two effects channels. I would have liked to be able to edit all four effects channels by placing the knobs on the FX expansion and then added, added the channel filter knobs, so the, the high pass and the low pass, um, down on the mix apart. I guess this is a very personal preference and one of the solutions would be to use the available faders next to the track selection area as effect faders and knobs. It's quick to program these um, changes and you know I don't really see it as a major flaw just rather than a I would say a limitation that can be dealt with with a little bit of ingenuity and time spent on, on figuring out how you want to set up the, the effects with, with these uh, assignable knobs and, and faders. When it comes to the weight and the size of a unit, it is definitely something that has to be addressed. The big question here is what you need to use the unit for. I wouldn't have much of a problem bringing the 4-track to gigs that I play locally in New York, but uh, overseas trips might be a bit of a challenge. Not just because of the 15.8 uh, pounds that it weighs, but also due to the you know, rather big body the the four track has. I honestly don't find the the unit bulky in that sense, uh, but I'm not really sure how an overseas trip would treat the unit unless it's packed in a flight case, and that would add another, I guess, eight to ten pounds to the weight. So, I mean, I admit, you know, I like to travel light, so I would probably keep the X ones around for overseas kicking. A whole other subject is is how to fit this unit into the booths everywhere. Luckily. Uh, the use of controllers have been popularized over the last couple of years, so most clubs have their booth set up to accommodate a space for these kind of things. I see uh, the Tractor S4 uh, used in many situations and fit in nicely in, in booths everywhere. So only time will tell if uh, this unit, which is slightly bigger than S4 though, uh, will, will give me any trouble. So I'll, I'll definitely make an update on that later on. So for the pros, um, this box really does almost everything that you will ever need. It is a, it's a really flexible uh, box in terms of allowing you to connect external inputs in the mixer and seamlessly mix them together with the tractor software. Uh, so since I like to mix many different styles of music like techno, house, along with disco 12 inches and other what I would call non-synced music. The platters uh, makes it really easy to beat match on the fly. Mixing, you know, wobbly music with X1 alone is, is a pretty challenging task, if, if not impossible, um, as you can see on some of my future bound broadcasts. So the, the mixing part brings me to the feel and the size of the pitch faders and the scrap platters. They really do feel great. And the resistant size of a 12 inch fader and this super silky smooth platters that you get, you really feel in control of the mix and that's what is really important with this box. Um, 
Overall, it's it's a kick-ass a controller. Even though I've been nitpicking on it, it's definitely a, a unit that is uh, that is here to stay in the, in my studio. So thank you for tuning in. And if you have any questions, uh, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Thank you.